Hi, I'm Charmaine James and I'm here with Dr. Lewis and I'm curious, Dr. Lewis, what do you inject with and why? Well, the most common thing I put in a joint is a combination of a sodium hyaluronate product, which is hyaluronic acid is another term for that, and there are a number of them on the market. Uh, I use that in combination with one of the cortisone products, usually a very a low dose of a cortisone product. There's a variety of them you can use. Uh, I think at low doses, uh, all of them are effective and, and, and safe to use, you know. That's the most common uh, one I use. There are other ones we use occasionally. Uh, some are not cleared for use in the horse, but we have off-label uh, discretion to use some things. Uh, there's a drug, for instance, popular in other parts of the world called Pentasan. Uh, which is being used some, it's compound in this country. Uh, it has its place. Uh, the old, uh, what we call glycosaminoglycans, the trade name that's a very common drug is Adequan. Uh, it's off the market right now because they're doing some refurbishing at the plant, I understand, so it's on back order. But it's been a, it's more commonly used intermuscular, but it, a lot of people don't know it. It can be used in the joint. It's been around a long time. It has its place in certain joints, but, and some people just use straight cortisone products by themselves, uh, which is not, not a bad thing. If you pick them right, you use low doses, uh, it's a little more economical on some horses to do it that way. Uh, but my choice is a hyaluronic acid and cortisone product combination. And that's the most common thing used today in horses. Well, that's what I've had the best results with, and amazing how if you do have one that gets a little sore or a little sprained or whatever, how quickly they come around. And, you know, definitely not the best to run a horse sore because you're going to create a lot of problems with this training after that. So, you know, that's why I'm not afraid to get in there, inject them, rest them, and then take them back, start working them again. You mentioned uh, one word there, it's important, rest. And a lot of a lot of cases that are probably going to benefit more from the rest than they are the drugs. But it's sometimes good to inject a joint and then give them a, a good long time off. And uh, particularly a horse that's traumatized a joint. You know, it's not a low grade wear and tear thing, but a horse that legitimately has hurt theirself. Is, is rather than just rest them, uh, and a lot of times I just rest a horse, but I monitor those horses pretty closely and two, three weeks down the road if I'm not seeing response. I tend to inject those joints and there's a reason why. Because inflammation in a joint left unattended causes long-term damage to a joint. Now, in degrees that's a low degree thing, but this is all cumulative in a horse's lifetime and they're athletes and they don't need any of that. So we've got good medicines today that interrupt those uh, inflammatory cycles and the, and the destructive things that go with that. You can interrupt those with drugs and it's good to do that when you get a horse that Mother Nature is not quite getting a hold of it as rapidly as you'd like to. But still, I'll rest that horse. You know, I think it's just good common sense and, and I've had, you know, good luck of just monitoring those things but I agree that the rest is key and there's there's at times that you're at the NFR and your horse seems to get a little bit sore. You have to make that decision. You know, should I help him out, inject him, stay off of him? You know, you got to make, you got to make those choices. But, sure. but uh, ultimately, if you're not competing for a championship or running at the NFR, I think it's best. In right. my case, give him that time off. Ice, you know, ice him and, right. you know, light exercise. Right. 